Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to my channel. My name's Mia and thank you so much for stopping by today. So uh, notice anything different about the way I look? I think I'm over winter and I'm ready to just jump right into spring and what better way than an outfit change along with creating a tiny little garden shop for B. So before we get into this video, I did include some photography tips at the end, so please stay tuned. But we're gonna go ahead and create a really small space for this shop. It is gonna be narrow. It is only a four by 10 room, but it was such a challenge to create a room at this size. And the other reason I'm using a room this size is because when I use the tripod camera, we're still gonna be able to see the sidewalls and the items in place. So it's almost like I'm creating a photo or even a painting. So just like a painting, we're gonna start from the back of the room and then start to build forward. So whenever I'm creating something like this, I try to keep the end image in mind of what I'm trying to achieve. So we're gonna put the larger items towards the back and then as we move forward, you're gonna notice that the height of the items will also change. So I'm gonna add these counters here and that's gonna serve as the horizon for my photo. And then eventually we'll add a focal point and then we'll start to see how this entire room ties together. But when choosing my color palette, I typically try to stick with three main colors in order to really make the room look visually aesthetic in my opinion. So I'm sticking with shades of green, of course, because we're building a plant shop. And then I'm also going with beige colors and light browns as well. And then in the gray white area, light grays, and I just feel like those colors feel really spring and airy together. So as you can see, I just added the cast register and that is the focal point for my picture. One thing that I forgot to include while building this was when I am building an area like this, I do tend to go back and forth between the camera mode so I can kind of start to see where I need to place items. But we're placing, as you can see, larger items in the back. So notice how on the counter, I only have a little flower pot there. And then the flowers and plant choices that I have behind it need to be taller and larger. And I feel like it just makes the picture really interesting or the build. And then as I'm adding items to the middle of the room, you'll notice that the items are also shorter and we're keeping the tall items towards the back and also on the side of the picture here. So I really like these ranch tables because they also, when placed next to each other, are just so seamless. And I love the rustic vibes that I have going on but Bee's happy, she was just clapping, so cute. So I didn't like having two ranch tables there, so we're gonna add this sink. I've never used this item before, the hand washing area, but it's almost the same size as the ranch table, but it adds a little bit more texture to the image, especially because it's got those handles or those faucets, and it's so pretty. So when I first built this area, I didn't originally put the paper bag there. That was one of the last items I placed because I felt like the center needed something else to catch the eye. And now the final thing I start to do is place items on the wall. And I've been wanting to use these adorable little gyroids because I think it's so cute that they just sing their own little tune. And then when you place a bunch of them together, they kind of create a little symphony. And I realized I did include some soundscape in this room using the jungle sound. And when I was done with this area, I think I sat in the room for like 30 minutes just listening to the gyroids and playing around with which ones I wanted to add to the room. So that doesn't show up in this video, but that is what I did afterwards. So now I'm gonna place the final images, final items on the wall. And notice how I've placed the white items more towards the front foreground of the image. And we're gonna keep the darker items towards the background. And that's because the darker colors are gonna pull you into the image while the lighter colors will pull you back. But I'll be back in a little bit to discuss more of this process. Alrighty, now that we're done with this area, it's time to take some cute photos. 
I'm gonna go into the tripod mode, keeping the crosshairs up of the camera so I can find that focal point, which is my cash register. And then you notice I adjust the camera moving it up and down because I'm trying to cut off the edge of the sink and the ranch table because I want those lines to feel like they're extending outward. So it really draws your eyes into the image. Now, originally when I did this room, I did have blue pillars like this, but when I took a picture of it and I stared at it for a while, that's what prompted me to change it into the wooden pillars, just to add some more texture to the image. So let's play around with some color here. As you can see, the accent wall is now white. And then I start to change the items to match. So we have a white gyroids, a white sign, and taking it a step even further, I am now adding white pillars here. But notice what the image looks like, especially since the light colors are in the back. I kind of feel like it washes out the overall image, especially because I've got those red pots in the foreground. So I decided to change those to white and then it kind of flows better. So from the pillars, everything's white moving forward and then behind there, we've got the darker look. And then we can even go for a more dramatic change by making everything dark brown. And that's the cool thing about Happy Home Paradise and Harv's Island is you can just dabble into different colors. But now that I'm happy with the overall look of my image, I'm gonna go ahead and put a preset on it just to enhance certain colors. And now let's go ahead and look at the composition of this room. So basically my focal point is in blue and that's where I had the crosshairs on when deciding how to photograph this area. Now when trying to figure out how to build the area, you'll notice that underlined in green, that's my horizon point. And notice how it's in the middle of the photo or the build. And then from there, we can add some perspective to the build and you'll see those lines are in purple. And notice how it starts from the back and it really starts to draw your eyes into the image. And then everything highlighted in pink and red, that's basically where your eyes are gonna move around. So your eyes are really drawn towards the middle of the image as well. Remember how I added that bag there because I wanted something interesting to look at? The next thing to consider is the time of day you're gonna set your island to. So it's currently still dark out, but as we move the cursor to the right, this is right before the sun's starting to come out. As you can see, we've got some sunlight coming in now, and I typically choose the first three areas that are you can see they look like a green shade but that's because the light is still really soft and even golden at one point i typically steer away from the middle section here anything that's white or blue looking because the light's a lot harsher and that's how it is in real life too when you're trying to choose a photo or a time of day to take photos and i always prefer morning shots but jumping right back into that image we created, let's say we want another viewpoint or another angle of the room. So I have my crosshair up and I pick a corner of the room to be my focal point, which in this case is the pillar. And then everything else, those lines are gonna flow to the outside. So here you just play around with what looks nice and just be mindful for the items that are gonna appear in the shot. We don't want any harsh lines towards the edge of the photo but I think that looks really pretty. And then after I took that picture, I realized I didn't like it, so I added a gyroid onto the wall. But it is definitely a great idea to take more than one picture of the room, and then you can go back and look at it and see if there's any spots where you think more items are needed. Now it's time to pick my favorite photos and share them with the world. Pick your poison, whether that's Twitter, Instagram, Reddit, whatever it may be. Maybe I'm just gonna share them with B only and we're gonna talk about it. But thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed creating it. And I will have other videos out in the future with more photography tips. So until next time, my friends, goodbye. Have a great rest of your day or night.